let's graph this rational function and let's use the eight step process that your book talks about. So first of all, step number one is to factor completely. So let's do that. I'll do that in purple. So when I factor, the top obviously doesn't factor because it's just x. But on the bottom, I can factor out a 2x because those both have a 2 and an x. And I'm left with x plus 3. And the reason I do that <coughs> is because I want to be able to cancel things out, and every time I cancel something out, that's associated with the removal discontinuity. But I'm, I don't want to get ahead of myself. Step you can't two. can't cancel anything out on this one. Yeah, you can. So you can. Yep. Well, you can cancel out, and we'll do this in just a second, but we're going to be able to cancel these two X's out, which means you'll have a whole, a removal discontinuity at X equals zero, because you set that equal to zero, basically. So, so be before we do that, let's talk about what the domain is. So the domain is all but, oh, I like to write it like this, x doesn't equal 0, it can't equal 0, and it also can't equal what? Negative 3. Set that equal to 0, it can't equal negative 3. So to find the domain, you're basically looking at the denominator, and you're setting it equal to 0, you're saying where does it equal zero because wherever the denominator equals zero that's not you're not allowed to do that mm -hmm. so that that will be a domain restriction okay. which means when I go to graph it later what's gonna happen is I'm either gonna have a hole which is a removal discontinuity or a vertical asymptote at these two places one negative three being a vertical asymptote mm -hmm. and let's talk about that now because that's zero I don't number think zero would be what well, it I don't know if they want you to write the domain. Sometimes they want you to write it in interval notation. So negative infinity, comma, negative 3, union, negative 3, comma, 0, union, 0, comma, infinity. Remember how to do that? Yeah, so I got that right. Good. Cancel factor. So this is number 3 is cancel the factor. So I'm going to cancel these x's, which means, I'm going to erase this and rewrite this, which means... 1, notice when I cancel it, I still have a 1 on the top, over 2 times x plus 3. That's really what our graph looks like, except x can't equal 0. So what's going to happen at 0? At 0, there's going to be a hole. There's going to be a removable discontinuity there, because it canceled out. Whenever you cancel out a factor with an x in it, set that factor equal to zero, and that, that's how you find the x-coordinate of the whole. Does that make sense? Okay, let me just do it for you, and then you'll, you can see other examples that I've posted on my website too. So when I, when I, my whole, what step is whole? Can't, so number three is cancel the factors, which I did, Four. and then identify all removable discontinuity. We're there now. So the removable discontinuity is gonna be at zero, and that's because that's what canceled out. When I cancel it out, basically that means x equals zero is no longer part of this graph. Whoops. Is no longer part of this graph. You see that equation right there? That equation is essentially the same as this original one right here. The only difference is I canceled the x's out of the top and the bottom. So if you take your graphing calculator and you punch this equation in, and you take your graphing calculator and punch that equation in, they're going to look the exact same. The only difference is going to be if you look at the table and if you look at zero, this one is going to say error or undefined. This one is going to have a value. And what will that value be? Plug in zero here and you'll find out what that value is going to be. It's going to be 1 over 2 times 3, which is 6. So 1 over 6. There's your hole. So at, that's going to be, I'll do this in a different color. That's going to be like right here, there's going to be a hole. Right there at 0, 1 over 6 is going to be a hole. And by hole, I mean removable discontinuity. That's what, that's what RD means. Removable discontinuity means that the graph doesn't go through that point. Because mm -hmm. it can't go through that point. Because if you plug 0 in here, what would you get? You get 0 over 0, which isn't a real number. So it doesn't work. You can't plug in zero here. It's not part of the domain because it gives you a denominator of zero. But you can plug it in here on that other equation. 
and when you plug it in there, you get one six, which, me which means that your point zero comma one six is actually you have to you have to open it, you have to like make it a hole in the graph. I'll explain that again later when we get to the next part. The other thing we do is the vertical asymptotes. And how do I tell the vertical asymptotes? The Vasi. That, like the That's the other one. That's the other denominator equals zero, right? That yeah. doesn't cancel out. So what, what did not cancel out? X plus three. So negative. So three x equals three, plus that plus line. Two. So what's gonna happen is right here. No, um, x equals negative three. So you're right, negative three. Thank you. X equals negative three. Right, one, two, three, right there. If I draw a vertical line going up a dotted line, basically uh, what an asymptote basically means is the graph can't cross that line. Because if the graph did cross that line, that would mean that for some point, x, x equals three. But x can't equal three, because if you plug three in for x, you'd get zero in the denominator which is a no-no in algebra. Make sense? The next step is find the horizontal asymptote. The horizontal asymptote is found by looking at the degrees. If the degree of the top is smaller than the degree of the bottom, which it is in this case, let me color code this. I'll go with green here. If the degree of the top, which is 1, is smaller than the degree of the bottom, which is 2, then the horizontal asymptote is y equals zero. So there's your horizontal asymptote. Mm -hmm. And now you want to find the intercepts. So what's the x-intercept? The x-intercept. How do I find an x-intercept? You set the y equal to zero. I plug the y equal to zero. And when I plug the y equal to zero, that basically means the numerator. I set the numerator equal to zero. So, but notice that I can't do that because what would that give me? Zero. It would give me zero, but that's not part of the domain. So then, so that removal of this kind And see, y that's y why there's a hole right there, exactly. There's a hole there because that's part of the removal. That's, that's yeah, a restriction on your graph. So wouldn't that also be the removal of this kind uh -huh. as the uh, y intercept? I'm, I'm sorry. I said, X, I said, X intercept. To find the X intercept, you have to set, uh, you y, set y equal to zero. There's actually a horizontal asymptote at y equals zero, so there's no x, there's no x intercept, mm -hmm. and the y intercept is your removable discontinuity because it's right there. That's plugging zero in for x, like I did right here and that gave me that point, which I can't really plug it into here because then it makes zero on the denominator. So, anyway, this is, this is the only point that we have so far in terms of our intercepts, that hole, that RD hole right there. So this, now, this doesn't look like a lot of information, but it actually is. This is everything we need to know. Here's what we know is going to happen. This graph is going to approach like that, it's going to approach the vertical asymptote from the right toward infinity, and it's going to go that way. As x gets bigger and bigger and bigger, the value, the y value, is going to get closer and closer and closer to zero, but it's never going to touch it. That's what an asymptote's all about. The only other thing you have to do is make a table of values. This is step seven. So we only really need one other value. We need a value somewhere over here to the left of the asymptote. Because we want to know if it goes up like this or if it goes down like this. It's going to do one of those two things. It's going to either go, it's going to either be up there or it's going to be down there. So let's find out what it is by plugging in negative 4 into this equation right here. Right up here in the upper right hand corner in, that, in our new equation. Let's just plug in negative 4 now. And what's our value going to be if I plug in negative 4 for x? What's our y value going to be? So I'm making kind of like a t-chart. If I plug in negative 4 for x, what's the y going to be? What's negative 4 plus 3? Um, negative, one. negative 1 times 2. Uh, negative 2. And 1 over negative 2 is negative 1 half. You can shift the distribute the 2 in. 
No, you don't have to because I just plugged in negative 4 right here for x. So you can just do order of operations. Negative 4 plus 3 is negative 1 times 2 is negative 2. 1 over negative 2 is negative 1 half. You kind of do that in your head. Yeah. You can do that whole thing kind of in your head, but just make sure you're doing it the right order of operations. So where is this value right here? Where's negative 4? It's negative 4 comma negative 1 half. It's right there. So what's that tell you about this graph? Where is it going to go? Can you see where the graph's going to go now? Can you see? You know that it's going to do what? It's going to go approach from underneath. It's going to approach from underneath, and it's going to go like that. All right, so that was kind of a... This is a long process. Rational, graphing rational functions is a long process, but you want to do each step and think through why you're doing each step. And then do about 10 of these examples. I know that's going to take a while, but you do about 10 of them and you really start to understand what it's all about. So check out those videos, those other videos on the playlist for some more examples.